Cassidy. And look at this. Oh. David Adams doesn't even make a ring introduction. As Jonah on the attack already. The Ozilla attacks. The Samoan werewolf right from the beginning. I don't think Jacob Fatu was expecting that from Jonah. No, Jonah wants that House of Warrior World Championship. He was supposed to wrestle Eddie Kingston here tonight, but due to forbidden door obligations on Sunday in Chicago, Eddie Kingston was not able to be here this evening. And Doc, Jacob Fatu seen an opening. He said the House of Glory World title is going to be on the line. There's an opportunity for me there. I just lost my MLW title last year. I want more gold around my waist. The MLW title that Jacob Fatu held longer than anyone else in history. And he wants more gold. He wants the incredibly prestigious gold that is the House of Glory World Championship. And like Doc said, 819-day reign for Jacob Fatu, put to an end by somebody I would also love to see in the House of Glory ring. Alex Hammerstone, another colossus in his own right. And Jacob Fatu comes from that legendary, that celebrated Anoa'i Samoan dynasty. Wow, look at that picture. Perfect drop kick by Fatu. Just scary, scary athleticism from Fatu. Six foot one, 280 pounds. Doc trained by Rikishi. Yeah, his uncle Rikishi. And Fatu, he's got that those ring smarts. He went right out after his opponent, right out after Jonah after knocking him out of the ring, and is taking it to him with those hard shots to the face. This is an eliminator tournament, ladies and gentlemen. The basis of this round-based tournament is every major name. Oh, my God. They are fighting. They're right in front of us here. Legitimately walking by us right here on commentary. As Jonah with a headbutt. And seeing them so close, they are incredibly massive individuals. Even more so, the, the TV doesn't quite do no. them justice. Fighting here by the merchandise stands where the meet and greets were earlier here at the NYC Arena. And Jonah has a chair. This is not an ODQ match as far as I'm concerned. The referee's letting it go. Now they're, they're getting dangerously close to us with those weapons and uh, with the morons following them around. Well, like I said, this round-based tournament, ladies and gentlemen, every major name that was put into a pool chosen at random. Jonah was the first one chosen. His opponent, Jeff Cobb, last month was also chosen at random. Manager then went back and chose Eddie Kingston in the same process. And it will Kingston. continue in a gauntlet-like yes. fashion. Yes. But like I said, Eddie Kingston not here because of forbidden door obligations. So Jacob Fatu called up House of Glory Manager, seen an opening, and he is here this evening as they're legitimately to our right. As Fatu's oh, picking up that merchandise table. One of those oh. hard, hard plastic tables, no give no, to one of those. No, He could have busted Jonah's nose with that. Choking Jonah out right, right there on, on the, the couch. As you mentioned, the referee really letting this one go. Well, I mean, I think he would have to. This is the, the implications here are massive. No one wants to see a draw here. What would even happen to the tournament if there were I a don't know. I would assume two more names are chosen at random, but I don't think, like I said, the referee, very leaning here, going to let these two guys go, and we'll get a winner. Well, they, two. they are almost back in the ring at this point. They're back here at ringside. I got fought too. Jonah asked for more there, but very smartly moved out of the ring. Oh! Jacob Fatu's skull bouncing off of the post there. And I know Samoans are known for their hard heads, but that's got to hurt anybody. That's going to hurt those, those steel posts. They are not rounded. They are jagged edge there as Jonah. Every bit of 300, I would say, uh, Doc, 350 pounds, 360 pounds, all his weight there on Fatu. Absolutely, who was folded up in that ringside mat and helpless at the mercy of Jonah at that moment and continues to be. Fatu's really in trouble. If he doesn't mount some offense soon, Jonah could be victorious. Fatu in trouble here. 
No. Oh, it's Jonah. Jonah, this is attitude by Jonah. I like it. He's, I, I do as well. He's owning that ring right now. He knows what is on the line. Showing some killer instinct, telling these idiots out here that he doesn't care what they think. He's looking to score victories. We know how big and how fast and how agile Jacob Fatu is. Same can be said for Jonah as Fatu with those clubbing strikes there. Irish whip out of the corner. Jonah hits hard. Fatu measures from the opposite side in. Straddles the second turnbuckle. Unfortunately for Fatu. Hey, boop by Jonah. Jonah takes a lot of his influence, Doc, from another tri-state legend in Bam Bam Bigelow. And we know how good and agile he was. That's right, the beast from the east. Now all that weight here by Jonah. But this Australian of Samoan descent, Jonah is every bit as agile, as big, as powerful as that legend. Jonah taking his time now on Fought 2. I don't know how wise of a decision that is, but that headbutt there, very Bam Bam Bigelow-esque there to the small of the back. He's in complete control, is Jonah. He's taking his time. He's plotting his course in dismantling his opponent. I think that's very smart. Give it up! Jonah has had an excellent game plan from the beginning. He attacked his opponent right from jump. For a little while, Fatu had the advantage, but as soon as Jonah had an opening, he took it back, and he's been staying on top of his opponent and sucking the life out of him right now. Now Jacob Fatu flies back to vertical base. Jonah quickly takes him back down and applies pressure. Cutting off that breathing to Jacob Fatu. And that is uh, a pro wrestler's worst enemy, Doc. Absolutely. A calculated attack, attack from Jonah here. Yeah, if you can't breathe, you can't fight. Now Fatu tries to reach for the ropes again. Trying to roll over. Managing to get back to a vertical base, and he does. He's See, if I were Jonah, I'd step on those bare feet. Oh, wow. He well, went for those head busted Fatu, but Jonah pulls the hair and right back to the barrel. Excellent, excellent tactics from Jonah here in this second round World Heavyweight Championship tournament match right here at House of Glory Judas. There will be a world champion, ladies and gentlemen, crowned at high intensity. The winner of this match more than likely will be one of the two challenging for that vacant House of Glory World Championship. Who will the other man be? That's up to House of Glory management. Could be anybody. The crowd getting behind Fatu, fighting to his feet. Fatu back up. Breaks out of the hold. Wow, what a right hand there by Jacob Fatu. Rocks Jonah, Irish whip reversed. Jacob Fatu holds on. Jonah, he goes to the outside. You know, Jacob Fatu. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Oh no. Wow! It's suicide dive from Fatu. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Doc, this is downright effing scary. This is crazy. Unbelievable, unbelievable agility from the big man. You know, in 2019, Jacob Fatu had an excellent contest against our own The Amazing Red, where he demonstrated some of that high-flying ability, and we're seeing it again here right now against a very different kind of opponent in Jonah. Shot out of a cannon was Jacob Fatu. The speed, the momentum. Oh, look at that, absolutely devastating crossbody hook. That is a ter that is terrifying that a man of that size can th get that kind of elevation. It is unbelievable. We are unbelievably blessed to have this man in the house of Louis ring. Unbelievable is Jacob Fatu. Look at this. Look at this. Look at that. Flipping sent on down to Jonah Hooks the like two. Cat-like agility climbing the ropes. The flipping sent on, but not enough to defeat Jonah. 
But my question is, how much do those kinds of aerial maneuvers take out of Jacob Fatu? I don't know. I don't know. He makes it look so easy. Big kick right there by Jacob Fatu, nice. right to the face. Classic Samoan thrust kick. For Look Fatu. at this handspring. He went for a handspring moonsault. But Jonah able to avoid it. Jonah with the senton down. One, two. Not enough for the victory, but Jonah able to put Fatu down for the moment and catch his breath. You see him holding the ribs. Yes. It is going to be the battle of the Tsunami Splash versus the Mighty Moonsault. Which one will prove to be victorious? Big splash there by Jonah. Jonah now measuring, middle of the ring. And for some kind of suplex, perhaps. I don't know. I mean, Jonah's a strong guy, but I don't know how likely that is at this stage of the game against Fatu. Super kick by Jonah. Super kick by Fatu. Th they're thrust kicks. Close line. Close line. Thank you, Doc. Close line down. Fatu down on the mat. Jonah catching his breath, planning his next attack. And he has been so calculated so far in this match. Jonah it looks like he's going back for that, that suplex that he was measuring earlier. Is he going to be able to get the 280 pound Samoan up? Yes, he does. He's unbelievable. Float over into a cover. Tense, a away. remarkable demonstration of power by Jonah. And now he's wondering what it's going to take. Well, he hasn't gone for that tsunami yet. Perhaps that's what he needs to defeat Jacob Fatu. But can he hurt Fatu enough in order to allow him to have the time to make that climb and hit that tsunami? That's the question. This is Jonah. Samoan drop creates some separation between Fatu how, and Jonah. How do you pop a man like Jonah up? Catch him on your shoulders in order to deliver that slam. That this Samoan is, drop. This is truly a main event match. It is mind boggling. Jonah, a product of the Australian independent wrestling scene, product of the WWE Performance Center while he was there in NXT. Now in New Japan Pro Wrestling, this is the best version of Jonah that I think we've seen. Same could be said for Fatu. Fatu expanding the scope of his name in the independent wrestling scene. Jonah with the middle finger there, the sign line with the Jacob Fatu, let him know how he feels. And now a war of attrition. Who will be able to get that small advantage, that small opening that will allow them to hit a move that will finish this oh, thing? Oh, my goodness. These men are throwing bombs, and this is just for an entry into the House of Glory Championship match. You can imagine if one of these men do make it and walk out of here tonight, what they're going to do when they actually get to fight for that championship. Well, they can't be thinking about that right now. They can only be thinking about surviving this encounter right now. Big clothesline, no. No give there. Jonah asking for more. Bring it. Double clothesline. Neither man goes down. And again, oh, Fatu down to a knee. Jonah hanging on the middle rope. Like two trains, two trains. Spear by Jonah takes. And Jacob it looks Fatu like down. The irresistible force took down the immovable object in that exchange. Jonah going for a destroyer. Are you serious? With sunrise. the leg hooks. But it wasn't enough. That was two. Fatu kicked out. And now, now, now. Jonah rising to the top rope. Is he going to ride that way? Fatu able to avoid the tsunami. There's that thrust kick again. Jonah goes down. We may be looking for the mighty moonsault here, Doc. And he hits it. Oh, nailed Hooks it. the leg. One, two, and Fatu is challenging for the House of Lords.
House of Glory is live this Friday, May 19th, as we present Beware the Fury. The House of Glory World Champion Jacob Fock 2 puts his title on the line against the indie god Matt Cardona. Main event are looking for a tag team championship rematch against the Bookers, but standing in their way are the Motor City Machine Guns. Speaking of the Bookers, Violet will put her HOG Women's Championship on the line against Miyu Yamashita. The Crown Jewel Championship will also be on the line as Charles Mason defends against Jake Something. Tickets for Beware the Fury are available right now at hogwrestling.net, and you can catch the show on Fight.